not having to worry about this? You know, I kind of fought with that idea, um, and I ultimately, you know, ended up telling myself, like, you know, this is such a great thing that I get to just relax, go out there, focus on pitching, don't have to worry about a thing, and uh, and, and just truly focus on my craft and, and try to leave the team in a great position to win a ball game. Kyle, I know this is a dream come true for you, being a born and raised in Colorado, obviously having spent the last couple of years here, but to sign this deal, what does that say to fans? You were a fan of this team, so now what is your message to the fans in Denver? Uh, be very excited for the future. Um, you know, uh, Bill and the front office have done an incredible job of helping us line up what we need to line up um, starting right now and moving forward. So, you know, I, I would say to the fans, uh, be very excited for this year and the, and the years to come with what we have going. Kyle, you're a competitive guy and you want to make the playoffs and do well. What gives you the confidence that being here for long term, this team will be able to make it there? Uh, I mean, look at the group of guys that we have right now. Um, a, a, a strong core group of us have been together for a long time and are sticking together for, for the next you know, handful of years. So that, that right there shows that we're bought into winning, we're bought into getting to the playoffs, winning in the playoffs, and ultimately winning the World Series with the Colorado Rockies. Kyle, as um, you were going through this process, was there ever a time when you felt you had any doubts about whether you'd stay with the Rockies, whether it would work out, and you know that confidence you mentioned, and, or the excitement fans should feel. Did you feel that all the way through there? Or? Uh, you know, with when, whenever you know contracts are negotiated, I, I feel like with anybody, you know, there, there's going to be back and forth. Um, uh, a lot of different emotions are, are going to be flying around on both sides. Um, but ultimately, uh, ended up extremely happy with uh, with what we what we have. We have moving forward. Um, both sides are happy. When I talked with uh, Bill um, after we after we settled on everything, he was extremely happy. I'm happy. My family's happy. So uh, overall, happy. Did you ever give yourself the the chance to think about alternatives? Did you ever enter into that? Those thoughts definitely you know cross your mind. Um, but ultimately, uh, for me um, and my wife helped me out at the time with this decision was uh, you know I, I looked around this clubhouse uh, uh, two starts ago. I was just sitting in my locker and I saw a lot of my teammates in there and I was like, you know what? These are guys that I love going to battle with, that I want to continue to go to battle with. Um, I love hanging out, I love coming to the ballpark and spending time with them. Um, and that goes, you know, top to bottom, not only players, but staff, training training staff, strength coaches, coaches, and front office. So, um, and you know, when I told my wife that um, about a week or so ago, uh, she's like, you know what? I'm going to stop you right there. That's That's your answer right there. Kyle, right, getting a long-term contract is a pretty big deal. Um, when you were a kid or when you were going to the Red Sox a couple of years ago, did you ever imagine you would make it to this point, or did you just always have a confidence you'd get here? Uh, in 2019, no, I did. I did not have you know the vision that I'd be signing a, a five-year extension with the with the Rockies and potentially spending you know the greater part of my career here. Um, it's a rough year, but you know at the same time you gotta somehow come out of it and uh, and persevere. Kyle, if you can, can you describe your relationship with Bud Black on and off the field? Uh, but he's one of those guys that's gonna, you know, continue to instill confidence uh, not only in me but you know every guy that we have uh, in our clubhouse. You know, as you guys know, he's a he's, he's an ex pitcher, he's a pitching coach, uh, he's, he's a pitching manager. Um, where you know he can be hard on us sometimes, but that's because he he knows the talent level and the skill set that we have, and he wants to make sure that he's squeezing every bit out of us that he can. Um, and, and knows and trusts you know, our stuff and what we can accomplish on the mound. Kyle, with this uh, five-year extension, the option for the sixth year, how much have you begun to think about your legacy and what you want to do here now for the next half decade plus? Uh, haven't thought too much about it just because of the craziness over the past uh, few days, but you know, it's something that I'll definitely start thinking about, uh, you know, the kind of impact that I want to leave uh, on and off the field to, uh, here in Colorado. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, helping out Special Olympics or, you know, the numbers that I do uh, for my career statistics, you know, those are things that, you know, I'm going to have to sit down and think about and, you know, find out what I, I truly want to accomplish here. Now, Kyle, these tend to be individual decisions uh, and family decisions, but how much did you talk to your teammates about it and how much did the decisions like uh, Brian McMahon and Chris Bryant figure into this? Um, they, they figured into it uh, quite a bit. Um, I know, you know, with Max signing, I, I, I truly started to see, you know, everything shaping the way that we wanted to shape um, with, with Bill's vision and Dick's vision, our front office, 
Um, obviously, you know, the Chris Bryant signing was, was massive, something to tell last year. Um, bringing Chrome back on the two year, you know, those, those things, those pieces start falling into place, and I was able to start seeing the big picture of everything, and uh, it was something that I wanted to buy into. Cal, um, there's probably nobody that knows pitching the way you do it at, in Colorado for the Rockies. Um, can you say something about what you've seen in your life, not just your career, but uh, of Rockies pitching and what it means to be part of this generation that has really taken the pitching to another level? All uh, right, you know, I think, uh, you know, myself, uh, Marquez, and Sensatella, um, over the years, we have done a good job of creating our own formula of how to get out efficiently here at Cruz Field at altitude. Um, Gomber and, you know, Chad are, you know, buying into that as well, but they're, they're showing success here at Cruz Field that, you know, Chad had countless amount of ground balls the other night. Um, and, you know, that, that's, that's one of the things that's going to give us success. And I think we've given or we've allowed ourselves to create our own formulas of how to get out here and have success in Cruz Field. And just back to that first part of the question, can you, you know, trace some of the origins of what you saw of pitchers and what, what you were able to take from the folks you saw either to take or to avoid? You know, I, I think it's just our, our own brand. Um, you know, growing up, you know, altitude was never a thing that played a part in my mind. I didn't understand it, didn't know why it affected, you know, the baseball. I didn't, really didn't understand it until I got into pro ball when, you know, the Rockies, you know, hammered change up into my brain nonstop. We're like, you need that at Cruz Field to get the ball on the ground because the ball flies there. Hey, pal, I know uh, as a pitcher, you have a lot of work to do. We can have to focus on that day and whatever, but, um, you know, so many things are out of your control. You know, you don't get to choose who drafts you and, and who, who lets you make your debut, et cetera. But have you at all this week looked back and thought about how weirdly sort of perfect it's all fallen together, that, you know, the Rockies were the one that drafted you and they you, you, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, it has, hasn't it? I mean, it's just, I mean, it, you can't script it any better than this. Uh, you drafted in the first round by your hometown team, the team you grew up watching. Uh, you work your way through their farm system. You end up debuting at home on the home opener. Um, end up having good success with the team, and then you know they end up extending you uh, for five years. Uh, potentially, you know, greater part of my career will be spent with the Colorado Rockies, a team that I grew up loving, watching, and you know, coming to games as a, as a fan. Um, being, a, being a Colorado kid, you know, growing up and playing baseball here and then you hit Forest Hill, you just, I mean, how much you, did it factor in, like, I want to stay in Colorado and also did it matter to you that, you know, you set an example for other kids in Colorado to play baseball, not to be a pitcher or a position player, but did that factor in your mind when you signed this deal that I'm a Colorado kid and they set the example for other kids to make sure they still play baseball in the state, the state of yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you shouldn't be, you know, afraid just because of, you know, the factors here in Colorado. Um, I mean, you got to kind of look at it as a challenge to take it on. Um, it's, it's exciting to show that, you know, you can have success here at Cruz Field at altitude. And, you know, if that's something that you want to chase after, I say go for it. Wait, to follow up, I got a baseball question. Because uh, it came up yesterday with Buddy, too, actually. But um, what what is it? You, you have the lowest home ERA um, among Rockies over the last six, maybe six years, uh, basically since you debuted. What is it about you that works so well here? Is it your style or just how you think of the place? What is, what is it that works so well? That's a good question. <laughs> um, I, I, like, I, like I said, I think it's you know my brand of pitching, um, you know, how, I, how I attack hitters here, um, understanding that there are factors at play that I can't control. So I have to make sure that I'm extremely sharp and focused on executing my pitches in the bottom of the zone, keeping hitters off balance, getting that ball on the ground as much as possible, allowing the defense to do their thing and turn double plays, get me out of jams. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game.